All right, so you might now say the player prefs was just too easy. That's really not very difficult. Yeah, true, but don't worry. We're going to start now using stream writers and they are slightly more complex. So it's not that easy that you can do this with a single line of code. Uh, that being said, let's get on with it. So we're going to use stream writers now. And with those stream writers, we can create and edit files via code. And that's pretty handy. Um, so stream writers and stream readers are classes which C Sharp provides us with. And we can use stream writers to create a file and write text into it. And we can use a stream reader to open a file and read text from it. All right, let's directly dive into the code. It's it's straightforward what they do. So writing to a file looks like this. We have this line up here. We store in this line the path where our safe game should go. And I will explain right away what, what this application of persistent data path is. Um, for now, let's just assume it's a path that is certain to work for safe games on each operating system. Okay, so Unity decides no matter what the operating system is, it definitely returns a path in which the safe game can be put and, and loaded. That's fine. And then in this path, we just create the file savegame.sav. Do note this .sav here is, is just an ending that I find intuitive. You can call it whatever you want. You can also call it .fun or .yay or .monkey or whatever you feel like. But but I mean, stuff seems like standing for safe. So it's rather intuitive. So I like this, this uh, ending here. Okay, so next up, we create an instance of the stream writer and we provide it with a uh, the path that we just stored. And next up, we just say streamwriter.writeline, hello world. And what this does is it writes a new line into the text file. And after we're done writing lines into this text file, we can then close the streamwriter again. Do note this streamwriter.close is immensely important. Um, only if you close it, the, the stuff is written onto the hard disk. It's like from the, the playerprefs.safe. Um, however, if you forget to close the streamwriter and you open another one on the same file, that might not work. You might get an exception because they might interfere with one another. So. It's really important to always close the stream writer after you have uh, written everything down. Next up, we might want to read from a file and we can do this by using uh, the same path and then create a stream reader with this path and then just say stream reader dot read line and this returns the line that we put into it. So this returns hello world and we save this line into the string and then we can close the stream reader. Also again, immensely important to always close the stream readers or the stream writers. All right, so far so good. Now let's look a little bit more in detail into this uh, application of persistent data path. So Unity automatically detects what operating system you're uh, working on. And on Windows, for example, it returns this path. See users, then your username, uh, app data, local load, then your company name, data persistence project. This is just a project name. And then you get uh, uh, the file you want to save. You can also use the same folder to store your preferences, which is a good thing to do. So yeah, this is the way to go. If you're going to look at this app data slash local low, uh, you're sure to find a few other games that lurk in this hidden directory. However, do note they are set to invisible. So you might need to uh, set your Windows Explorer to uh, 
show you invisible files. Um, for other operating systems, you can just look up the documentation of application.persistentdatapath. Uh, it will tell you where they lead on other platforms. All right, so I again created a completely blank Unity project. And here I have the Streamwriter demo script. And I'll do the same thing that we did with the player press. So if I press um, input dot get key down key code dot s. And then we have the same thing for L. And what we need to do here is the thing that we already saw. We uh, create the file path. File path equals application dot persistent data path. Uh, do note there are different things. This, for example, leads to the data folder of the project itself when you build it. So if you want to create a portable version of your game, you might want to use this instead. However, this is the usual way to go. So uh, we use this and then say uh, the subfolder will be called my demo save game dot And it should still work because the, the, the file ending, it's it's not important. It's just for for users to to get an idea what this file might be. Okay, so next I'm going to create a stream writer. All right, and it tells me red underline. That's bad, but it's not that bad because if I hover over it and I press this uh, light bulb here, it already tells me um, this might be in a different namespace. So I just use this system.io and it detects the class. So now it works. And I call it sw equals new streamwriter and I give it the file path. Whoops. Okay, so I created the streamwriter now. Now I'm going to write streamwriter.write. Um, note I can write single characters or I can write a whole line. I want to write a whole line here and I say, I don't know, let's say the first line, hello world. And we're going to write a few more lines. How are you? Yay. I'm feeling just fine having a conversation with myself just great okay now streamwriter dot close never forget to close a streamwriter and that way this file should already be created let's look if that's true so i save everything go back to unity press play and I forgot to do something quite important because that's very, very useful. Um, I'm printing uh, saving to, I'm just printing the file path. So I have a easier time uh, navigating to it then. Also, I know if everything works. So I print just where I'm saving my data to. So get back here, let Unity compile. All right, and start it. Press S. Ah, I know. Drag it onto the camera, save it, press play, and let's press S. And we can immediately see it was saved. So I just use this um, I just use this folder name, press enter and voila, this is what Unity creates for me. So here you can already see there are already some files. For example, there's an output log where 
many fancy things are printed. So this is where errors might show up. All right, but not looking at that here. Here you can see the file we created. Let's right click it and open it. With the text editor and voila, everything is in here. Look at that, isn't that magnificent? So saving the data just worked. Now let's see if we can load the data. So we have to do something very similar. I'm going to say um, the same file path. Then I say print loaded from file path. All right. And then we create the stream reader. A new stream reader with the file path. Ah, nah, that's correct. The file path, then stream reader dot read line. All right. Now let's look at read line. As you can see, stream reader dot read line returns a string. And guess which string that might be? It returns the first line that was printed into it. So it goes from top to bottom and reads line by line. So let us just print line by line what was in there. Now I'll just write this two times and then never forget, close the stream reader. And if I press save now, let's go to Unity. Remember, I already saved it. So now if I just press load, it immediately tells me loaded. First line was hello world. Second line was how are you? So it doesn't load the whole text file, but instead streamreader.readline only reads a single line. So now let's imagine we want to get a little bit more uh, into saving a real data. I'll just create a few variables here. Um, HP, then let's say private string name equals Hansi Bear. Uh, also, I won't violate my own coding conventions. Private uh, int, I don't know, um, level, player level equals seven or eight, whatever. And now let's save uh, these, these variables. So here we're going to save the name. Then we want to save the player level. And lastly, let's save HP. Okay. And when we read them, let's look how this fares. All right, pressing S, so it saved everything. Now I'm pressing L and it seems to work fine. Okay, so this is how you can save data quite basically with the StreamWriter. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, thumb me up and subscribe me. And also I wanna mention, I've got a Udemy course going on about this very topic, safe games, serialization and data persistence. And if you wanna dive deeper into this topic, you should head over there and grab the course at a discount. You can find the link for the discount in the description below. And maybe I will see you over there.